This is the NBC Theater. From the NBC Theater transcribed in Hollywood, a story by Thomas Hardy. A story of witchcraft on the moors of southern England, entitled The Withered Arm. The adaptation is by Ernest Canoy. Here now, The Withered Arm. The wind do howl dismal over the slopes of Egdon Heath. It is an old country. And tis here that the ancient men did worship demons and the spirits of the heath before the cross of Christianity came to Britain. To the north are the giant pillars of Stonehenge, and to the south the sea, and betwixt the twain the folk of Wessex scratch their living from the soil. South of Holmstoke stand the good tight barns of Farmer Lodge, Eighty fine cows line up at night for the milking, and the chatter of the milkers echoes through the stalls. So now, you demon-haunted animal, get over. He do bring his bride home tomorrow, I hear. Come as far as Anglebury today. Has anybody seen her? Nay, they say she's a rosy-cheeked, tisty-tosty little body enough. Years younger than he. Get over. So... How old do you call him, then? Thirty. More like forty. Hey, what be the difference to us of Farmer Lodge's new missus? Uh, It's hard on she. His new missus? Why? Not her, but Rhoda Brooke. He ain't spoken to her for years. Hush now, she'll hear you. She's at the other end of barn. (laughs) Can't be a pleasant day for her. Farmer Lodge bringing home a proper missus. So now, careful there... Stand! Now, you witch beast! You've upset the pail! Jimmy? I'm here, Mother. They'd be saying down in the barn that your father brings his new wife home from Anglebury tomorrow. Did they tell you? Hmm, They didn't think I could hear. I shall want to send you for a few things to market. You'll be pretty sure to meet them. Yes, Mother. Is Father married then? Yes. You can give her a look and tell what she's like if you do see her. Yes, Mother. If she's dark or fair, and if she's tall, as tall as I, and if she seems like a woman that has worked or one that show the marks on her of a lady, as I suspect she do. I'll try, Mother. See if you can notice if her hands be white. Or if they look as though they've done housework or are milkers' hands like mine. Look at her well, Jimmy. Mark it all and tell me. We be almost there now, darling. Get up there. Up there. Is the road always this lonely? Aye, but on market days and fair time. Do you like the new rig? Red wheels and <laughs> had them painted special for you. It's very pretty, dear. Ah, there's not another farmer of Wessex got a rig like this. Nay, no prettier bride to ride in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't. Stop. There's, there's someone on the road. Oh, not but a village boy. He stopped to look. Hurry up, but let's pass him quickly. Yep, yep, get up there. Yep. Ah. There you are. Left in the dust. How that lad stared at me. Aye, I saw that. He's one of the villagers? I think he lives with his mother a mile or so off. He knows who we are. Oh, yes. You must expect to be stared at just at first, my pretty Gertrude. I know. I thought perhaps the boy might have wanted help. He was carrying a very heavy load. Oh, oh he's got the lads who carry a hundred weight once they get it on their backs. Think no more of it, dear. Now, another mile and I'll show you our house in the distance. You can see the chimneys clear over the fold. <laughs> A brave sight, I warrant you.
Did you see her? Yes, close. Is she ladylike? Yes, and more. A lady complete. Young? Well, she's grown up. She looked a woman to me. What color is her hair and face? Lightish. Her face is comely and live dolls. Her eyes are not dark like mine. No. Bluish. I couldn't tell if she were tall. She was sitting down. Then do you go to Holmstock Church tomorrow morning, go early, and notice her walking in, and then come home and tell me if she's taller than I. Why don't you go and see for yourself, Mother? I go to see her. I wouldn't look up at her if she were to pass the window this instant. You never told me what sort of hands she had. I never seen them. She never took off her gloves. I don't see why you don't look at her yourself, Mother. You wouldn't understand, Jimmy. Now, come to supper. of white. Ay, that's what he would like. Jimmy, asleep already. Fair, but not as tall as I. Not as tall as I. Who's there? What is it? I know you. Get out. Go away. I must come in, you know. Get away from me. Go away. But I've come to show you something. See? It's gold. My ring. Leave me alone. But you must see my wedding ring. Hey, look. Look at it closely. Look. No. No. It's gold. It flashes in the light. He gave it to me. It's mine. Do you like it? <laughs> Get out of here. Get out. Get out. Get out. Oh. Oh. Mother. Mother, are you all right? Uh, oh, yes, Jimmy. I'll go back to sleep. I, I've had a dream. Oh. Good night. Good night. Merciful. That was no dream. She was here. But she couldn't have been. I could feel her arm where I grasped it. The flesh and bone of it. It must have been a dream. But the feel of her arm, that was real. Lodge's wife. She said she would come. Said so? When? How does she know us? I talked to her in church. I told you never to speak to anybody from that house. She spoke to me first. When I were in church, not the house. What did you tell her? Nothing. She said, are you the poor boy who had to bring the heavy load from the market? And she looked at my boots where they were cracked from the wet. She said she'd bring me a new pair. Shall I lift the latch? Shh. Mother. All right. Let her in. Well, you are in. I thought I'd come to the wrong house. Is this your mother? I. I've brought your little boy a new pair of boots. I do hope you won't mind. Your voice is the same. I beg your pardon? Nothing. Nothing. You will take the boots for the boy. His are so worn and cracked. Mother, may I take them? What? Oh, yes. Yes, Jimmy. Say thank you to Mistress Lodge. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. It's my pleasure, Jimmy. I don't believe I know your name. Rhoda Brook. Jimmy, run outside. Yes, Mother. You're one of my husband's milking maids, aren't you? Yes. I hope you don't mind my stopping by. You see, I do love to walk, and your cottage is the nearest one. It is the nearest. I know. 
Well, uh, I hope you're well. You don't look quite well somehow. I'm well enough. Ma'am? I'm not used to the winds from the heath and the fog. I come from up country, you know. I hope you will find this air agreeable, ma'am, and not suffer from the damp of the water meads. You know, now that you mention it, I have had one little ailment that puzzles me. Oh, it's nothing serious, but I can't make it out. A fever, ma'am? No, no. This on my arm. Here, I'll turn back my sleeve. See? It's a mark, almost as if someone had grasped my arm. It must be some rash. But it does look strange, doesn't it? Almost as if you could see the shape of fingers. How did you get that? I can't tell. The other night I was asleep, dreaming and dreaming. I felt I was away in some strange place. And suddenly a pain shot through my arm there. And I woke up. <laughs> you know, I, I tell my husband that it looks as though if he'd flown into a rage and struck me there. I suppose it will go away soon. On what night did it come? Yesterday eve. I was quite frightened by the dream. I didn't know where I was till I heard the clock strike two. Well, good day, Rhoda. I shall see you again. Good day, ma'am. Two o'clock. And I heard the chime when I woke. It can't be that I have that power. That's witch work. I didn't want to harm her. Not really. Yes, ma'am. Stand there. Oh! oh something wrong, ma'am? My arm. Oh, is it no better? Oh, no. It pains me dreadfully now. Perhaps you'd better go to a doctor, ma'am. Oh, I've seen one. Mr. Lodge insisted I go. But the doctor didn't seem to understand what was wrong. He told me to bathe it in hot water. May I see it, ma'am? Oh, no. Oh, all right. There. Oh. It does look much worse, doesn't it? You can see the shape of four fingers. Oh, it frightens me. My whole arm seems to be shriveling from the spot. I'm so sorry, Mum. My husband says it's as if some witch had taken hold of me there and marked me. No, no, it couldn't be that. That's only fancy. I suppose so. I wouldn't mind it. But I have a notion it makes my husband dislike me. Men think so much of personal appearance. Some do. He for one. Yes. He was very proud of my appearance at first. I... My serving maid told me that there is one way that I might be able to find the cause and so the cure. A medicine? No. A, a clever man o over on Egdon Heath. I don't remember his name. Millie said you might know where he was. Not Conjurer Trendle. Yes, the Trendle, that's it. Why do they call him Conjurer? Well, folks say he was a... That he had powers others had not. But that's superstition. I thought he was a medical man. I'm ashamed of Millie, really. Did Millie say why she thought I would know about the Conjurer? Why, no. They talk about me in the barns, they do. Why should they? No matter. Some folk have a viper tongue. Do you know much about this conjurer, Trendle? No. No, of course not. Why should I? No reason, I suppose. Do you think it would hurt if I just visited him from curiosity? It is your affair, Mum. Is it far to where he lives? Yes. Five miles. In the heart of Egdon Heath. I should have to walk, I suppose. Will you come with me to show me the way? No, not I. Why not? You will help me, won't you? You do want me to get well, don't you, Rhoda? Aye, Mum. Then take me to Conjurer Trendle. All right, Mum. We must start early. It is a long way over the heath. Is it not 
much further, Rhoda. Only over the fold, Mum. It's, it's getting dark, isn't it? It always seems to come quicker on the heath. Tis here they tell the stories of the old king who died on Egdon Heath. Him that they call Lear. King Lear? King over all Wessex he was. There's the conjurer's cottage. Hey, tumble down, please. Aye, come on. Oh, oh, there'll be a storm. Hurry. There's no light inside. Conjurer Trendle don't need one. Knock. I, I can't. Here, then. Let me. Is he at home? I don't know. What do you want of me this night? Are you Conjurer Trendle? Conjurer? I be no conjurer. Just a dealer in furs and turf and sharp sand. But they said you had powers. Aye, there be fools that will believe anything. Still, when a wart disappears, when a fever goes away, there are them would buy old Trendle a glass of grog. You, Tether, what are you doing here? I came to show her the way. Oh, that be all, eh? No other reason? No. Can you help me, Trendle? It's my arm. Let me see it. Oh, it, it pains me so. Aye, there be the mark and the withering. Got worse, ain't it? Yes. My whole arm is twisted. Been to doctors, eh? They gave me some medicine, but it didn't help. Ah, uh, medicine can't cure it. It be the work of an enemy. An enemy? Aye. What enemy? That be best known to yourself. If you like, I can show the person to you. I can do no more, and I don't wish to do that. Come inside. Sit down. What do I have to do? Nothing. He takes a tumbler. Now, watch the glass. Look closely into it where the egg whirls. It's so dark. Look closely. Now, do you see the likeness of any face as you look? I, I can't tell. Oh, it changes. Then look careful, and you'll see the enemy. Do you see it? Do you see it now? I think so. I, I can't believe it. I don't understand. Did you see the enemy? Yes, I... Yes, I see it now. Rhoda, was it you that told me of this man? How strange. She left me there on the heath, her face rigid, aged in one moment. And as she walked, she held her arm close against her body to hide the twisted, withering shape. And behind her walked Rhoda Brook. Six years passed over the heath. The boy, Rhoda's child, disappeared from the neighborhood of Holmstoke. And Farmer Lodge's great house grew dour and gloomy. The woman he had wooed for her grace and beauty... Stayed hidden in a room, brooding on a strange twisted arm, marked with the shape of an angry hand. Are you in there, Gertrude? Gertrude! Gertrude! I'm here. I wanted you at table tonight. The squire asked after you. I was not feeling well. Ah, uh, you've not been feeling well nigh six years. What's this? Nothing. Nothing? It smells worse than the cow barns. It's a medicine. Another one? You've got the whole house cutted up with these witches' brews. I keep thinking that this one might cure, or this one. Ah, uh, blast me if you won't poison yourself with these apothecary messes sometime. I married a wife, not an alchemist familiar. <laughs> Oh, now, now, there, last there, there, there'll be no call for blubbering. I only meant it for your good. Oh, you don't love me, do you? 
You haven't since... since no, I... no, 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 no. Really. Ah, oh, you want something to cheer you up, that's all. Ah, uh, perhaps if there'd been children. Perhaps. I, I thought of adopting a boy once. Uh, but he's too old now and he's gone away and I don't know where. No, will you stop the confounded rowing? Oh, look out, you spill the bottle. Spill it. I'll spill it. I'll spill the whole stinking mess of it. There, there, there. Now, when you find out you're the same wench I married, come search me out. Until then, I want no part of you. Oh, the arm. The withered arm. Oh, if it could only be smooth and round as it was when he first saw it. <laughs> Conjury, you must help me. You think too much of my powers. This be no ordinary wound. It will not be cured by pastes and ointments and amulets. But there is a cure. Aye, there be only one chance known to me. Tell me. You must touch with a withered arm the neck of a man who's been hanged. Hanged? Aye, before he be cold, just after he be cut down. But how can that do good? It will turn the blood. You must go to the jail when there be a hanging and wait for him when he be brought off the gallows. Lots have done it, though perhaps not so pretty a woman as you. You say it works. Never know it to fail. I used to send dozens to Costa Bridge for the hangings, but they don't hold with it nowadays. Aye, but it turns the blood. Remember that. It turns the blood. <laughs> Now what? Oh, it be a lady. What does he want here? I, I want to speak to you. Ah, I was just going to bed, but I don't mind stopping a minute for such a one as you. Come into the house. You're Davies? Aye, but if you come to me for gardening work, I can't come. I never leave Casterbridge for gentle folk, no simple. <laughs> Not I. My real job is uh, officer of justice. Yes, yes, you're the hangman tomorrow. Well, what's wrong with that? And it's no use to come to me about the knot. I tell them all, one knot be as merciful as the next, if you keep it up under the ear. You're, you'll be a relation to him? Oh, no. What time is the execution? Same as usual, after the London stage gets in. We always wait for that in case of a reprieve. A reprieve? I hope not. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of business, so do I. But still, if ever a fellow deserved to be let off, it's this one. Only 18 and accused of burning a hayrick. Three men swore he was in the next town. But they're obliged to make an example of him. Ah, so that's it, is it? <laughs> but they don't look the so. so what's the complaint? My aunt. All a scram, ain't it? Well, perhaps I might manage it for a suitable, tidy fee. And it must be kept secret. <laughs> Lover not to know, huh? My no. husband. Oh. I, I think he'd kill me if he found out. He told me he was going to market at Wayden Prize, and I stole out to come here. Well, now, I think I can get you a wee touch of the corpse. Where is it now? It. You mean, he's living yet. Now, you'll be punctual. You'll be waiting at the little wicket in the jail wall. If you don't want nobody to know you, wear a veil. It will go all right. There's no chance of failure. He'll swing sure as tomorrow be Saturday. You can rest easy on that. <laughs> Yeah. 
There he is. There he is. There they go up the scaffold. Now, don't shove. I paid as much for my seat as you did for yours. Well, you should have paid for two. Why, you skinny bag of bones. Oh, hush now. What's the sense of our spoiling the joy of the hanging for both of us? Yeah, I suppose so. There's Davies with the rope fixing it about the lad's neck. <gasps> Fancy taking money for that. Why, it's, a, it's unchristian. Here now, don't lean forward. You're blocking my view. He's ready now. Right here. Hurry. There. Now. Lay the arm bare. I'm ready. Along the mark of the rope, you understand? Yes. Ah. In here. Ah. They've just now cut him down. There. There he be. <gasps> oh, so young. Waste no time. Now, if the blood is to turn, now you... Here. Give me your arm. There. <laughs> Did you see her? Rhoda! Gertrude! What are you doing here? I know. She's coming between us and him. John, I, I don't understand. Why are you here, both of you? He's our son, and he's dead, Harry. This is my child, and we've come to take him home to be buried. No, no. This is the meaning of the vision Satan showed to me. You are like her now. The woman in my dream. I took her arm. <laughs> Gertrude. My son. My son. Hangman, get a doctor. Help her. She's fainting. Hi, sir. That cursed arm. Hurry, man, get doctor. You'll not need a doctor. Her blood changed all right, but too far. She's dead. Dead? Aye, but the charm worked. Look you, the withered arm. It's like it were a young girl, round and fair and smooth as a newborn babe's. heard transcribed a dramatization of The Withered Arm by Thomas Hardy, as adapted for radio by Ernest Canoy. In our cast, the conjurer was Donald Morrison, Elsie was Queenie Leonard, Agnes was Betty Harford, Rhoda Brook was Naomi Stevens, Jimmy, her son, was Johnny McGovern, Farmer Lodge was Ramsey Hill, Gertrude, his wife, Virginia McDowell, and the hangman, George Pembroke. Your announcer, Don Stanley. We hope that you will join us next week at the same time when, over most of these same stations, NBC will inaugurate a new series of dramatic broadcasts entitled NBC Presents Short Story. First broadcast, 50 Grand by Ernest Hemingway. And in the ensuing weeks, dramatizations of some of the most powerful and significant short stories of our time. Crazy Sunday by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Mr. Arcularis by Conrad Aiken. The Lottery by Shirley Jackson. Shadow of Evil by James Aswell. Executive producer for the NBC Theater is Wade Arnold. The director of the NBC Theater is Andrew C. Love. This is NBC, the national broadcast.